Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we continue talking about operational semantics. We shall see a variation of operational semantics called big step semantics. In the previous class, we saw evaluation rules for a small language with booleans. Here they are, those rules. I've augmented the initial rules with two new rules to handle negation. That will help with examples. These are the rule, new rules. These rules are called small step semantic. I mean, uh, the entire formalism here, it's described in a style that's called small steps because they show how terms are transformed one step at a, at a time. But there is another way to write these rules called big step semantics. The equivalent rules are given on the right side of the figure. Try to read the rules. Can you figure out why we call the second approach big step? We call them like this because each rule shows the meaning of terms up to a value. That is, the rules show which value is produced for each term. This kind of approach simplifies a few proofs. For instance, can you prove that if t1 then t2 else t3 is equivalent to if not t1 then t3 else t2? We can perform this proof by case analysis. We need to show that for each possible derivation of a term, we have the same result for deriving the other term. So let's start. In how many ways can we derive an if-then-else expression? There are actually two rules for if-then-else. Be true and be false. Let's start with be true. If we use this rule to do the derivation, then we know that the two premises must be true, that is, that t1 evolves to true and that t2 evolves to a value v. Let's call these facts 1 and 2. We can use fact 1 as the premise of b not true, this rule here, to conclude that not t1 evolves to false. Call this fact 4. By rule B false, right here, plus premises 4 and 2, because I need two premises for this rule, we know that if not T1, then T3, else T2 evaluates to V. If we assume that B false was used to derive the if then else instead, then reasoning is similar. We can stop the video, you can stop the video, I mean, and read the proof over. Just check that proving equivalence in this case is just a matter of plugging facts in the right rules. The proof is very mechanical. If we had to use the small step style to do the same proof, it would have been more difficult. We need induction because the rules use premises that do not terminate immediately. Using the small step style, there are three rules that we can apply on the if then else. If we apply if true, then the proof is simple. I've written it above. And you can read it. No induction is necessary, actually. Assuming if false is the same, no induction is necessary. You can again stop the video and read the proof above. But if we assume if, this rule here, then we need induction. We will need to apply induction on the derivation t1 arrow t1 prime. You can read the proof on the figure above. But the fact is that this proof becomes more complicated in the small step formalism than in the big step specification. In other words, because terms evaluate directly to values, many times, oftentimes, we can prove facts using the big step style without any need of induction. It's just a matter of plugging facts into the right rules. 
In the small step style intern, usually we need induction whenever we have premises that also use evaluation rules, like here and here. And yet, often the small step style is more used than the big step style. Why is this so? Big step specifications have a few problems. In particular, it's problematic to deal with programs that do not terminate. And it is also difficult to reason about the order of eva evaluation in big step specifications. But in the small step style, usually it's very easy to specify the order of evaluations because we are specifying transformations one step at a time. One advantage of the big step style is that it's easier to implement interpreters. For instance, here is an interpreter for our toy language in Prolog with Boolean and arithmetic operations. In the small step style, um, I mean, this is in the big step style. Notice that this is a pretty faithful copy of the evaluation rules. And here it's an example of queries that we can run on the interpreter. So we can evaluate programs using this interpreter and we can see that the meaning of each program is a value when the program terminates. Notice that if we had to implement the same interpreter using the small step style, then we would have to implement some way to iterate on the rules because each rule evaluates just one small step of the process of interpreting the program. But here, each rule, in the big step style, I mean here, each rule executes until termination. So we don't really need to implement this loop that would be necessary in the small step style. And with this last class, we close our introduction on operational semantics. Here in this figure, you find the key papers that have motivated most of the discussions in the last four classes. Next time, we shall start talking about type systems. Thank you.